Hey, and welcome back to Toby's Real Skills with Toby. That's me, the guy behind the camera. Surprise. In today's video, we'll talk about the Lissiti battery box. I received this battery box, which does not include a battery at all, but I received this one, which is made for 12 volt batteries. Depending on the size you buy, it might fit in here or not. More information about this unit you will find in the description below and I wanna go ahead and tell you already. There's also a discount code which applies to this unit in case you wanna buy this unit. Um, I'm not getting any money for that, but I received this box for free. With this box, I'll show you what you need to do to set it up. I'll go through all those ports which are available and I'll show you what I did with it and my idea how I wanna use it. When you received this box, there's already information printed on here which is pretty good. So it also tells you nominal capacity. You can use HM, gel, lead acid, or lithium phosphate batteries. And really depends on the size, but they tell you with the HM, gel, lead acid, group 24, 27, or 31 will fit in this box. Lithium ion phosphate between 80 amp hour and 300 amp hour um, customized. And I think those are the cells you just put together um, and build your own battery. Um, it gives you more information about dimension. It gives you information about the carry weight, charge methods, ports you get. We'll go through that. Also an operating temperature and accessories. But, but this box from our, what I have seen so far, it comes with a lot of features. I did already use it because I really wanted to know what I'm talking about um, before I show you this unit. So, but the thing how you would start first, and I think that's the most important for you to understand it, is it does come with installation hardware, a little package uh, which includes extra straps or holders which you can screw into uh, the box. It comes with all the installation hardware you need outside to tie it down. And I went already ahead and just strapped, uh, put my battery in here and strapped it down. I'm using just a random lithium ion phosphate 12 volt and 100 amp hour battery, normal size battery. And I did already connect the terminals, sorry. You don't have to, this is a Victron battery um, sense, which I have always mounted to this battery already. So you totally forgot about that part. You do not need to do that at all. Beginner friendly battery box, super easy. You just need to open it up. Then you have the lid, which is packed full of stuff. And we'll go through that in a second. And then you have the terminals. So I did just connect the terminals. I also used um, those lock dot caps to um, isolate it, make it more secure that it doesn't touch anything which it shouldn't touch when you close it. When you put it in, you strap it down with the strap which is already pre-assembled in here and then tighten it down as much as you can or want. If this is not tight enough, there's an extra strap in here. There are extra hardware also to put probably on the sides, right and left here and to screw it in as well. You don't have to, you can. When you mount a battery, it's, it is really that simple. You just take the lid, and you close it, make sure that you have a good routing with the wires in here. Close it and then just use those bolts, they delivered with it, bolt it down, and that's all. It's connected, you could turn on the switch. Um, when you install it, make sure the switch is of course off. But before I do that, let's briefly talk about what we see here. So this is the lid, that's how it comes. Everything's pre-wired, everything is pre-routed. Those thick wires go to the battery, right? Just to get an understanding what's in here and what you should touch slash you shouldn't touch. So this is where the inverter resides, the thousand watt inverter, which this unit comes with. We do have here more ports, which are a USB quick charge 3.0 and a power delivery USB-C, which you can turn on and off. Same on this middle one. And then we have a 12 volt cigarette lighter over here, which comes always in handy. And those are just DC power, a main power switch for everything, DC power, but also AC power. When I turn it on, you will see the DC power illuminates those quick charger, USB charger and cigarette lighter. You can turn it on separately or not. 12 volt doesn't have a light at all, but that's not a problem. The multifunction display is just for the inverter. So you can turn on and off the inverter separately from the main power switch, what we just did. So it means there's an on off button here, so we can turn it on, then it makes a beep. Then we can see, oh, how full is the battery? Then we have different modes here. Right now, so there's a battery display, green, orange, red. I mean, that's when it's green. It should be clearly fairly simple, I guess. I hope you can read this. 
So here we have, um, first off, as I mentioned, a battery display, then we have a DC voltage and we can change um, when clicking in here. So we'll start here, DC voltage, 13.3. Then we go to the next one, it's AC voltage, which means the inverter, 120 volts. Then we have AC watts, which means how much watt do we pull out of the battery? And we can do that on the side of the lid. And here it is, the AC outlet, with an extra fan for the inverter. When you continue with the display, at the moment it's zero, obviously. Continue with the display and click one more, we go back already to the DC voltage. What we could do is also press mode for, I think it's five seconds. And then it's just and cycle through um, DC voltage, AC voltage, AC watt, continuously. As long as you turn it not off or you change the mode again, because uh, it also explains the modes one and two, and we are here, left side mode one, one, two, we are in mode two already. So let's change back to mode one. There we go. When we don't want to use it, we can just turn off the inverter because we don't need it, right? But we'll keep it on, we'll turn it off. And I'll try to give you more of a tour. So if you've seen those uh, three the DC outputs, USB and cigarette lighter, right? So then we have the main power switch, which is this one, the main power switch for everything. Then we have the display unit here. And what you can see before jumping to the interfaces, here is a MPPT solar charger as well. This one is uh, rated up to 10 amps. It's really behind all those wires. They seem to be pretty well made. Then we have to talk about all those Anderson and connectors. And I'll show you this one really quick. The, those are the Anderson connectors from the side. 175 amp Anderson connector. We have two of those, actually three, Cray, a 50 amp Anderson connector and one plaque Anderson connector. And that's what I really like about it. They labeled it pretty well, I feel like. When you look here, whoop, you can see we do have the 175 amp input and output. Then we have those two top and bottom, 50 amp input and output. And then we have another here on the bottom, the gray one, uh, 50 amp input output. And on top, we have the 10 amp solar input, which is pretty cool. I'll show you later in the video how I used it and what I did. And also with the internal MPPT charger, but also you can connect an external MPPT charger to get more than 10 amp solar pushing into the battery. Pretty cool. So those are the connectors and connections. And with this battery, you get this set of clamps with an Anderson connector, which is nice. So you could just plug it in and use it. And whatever you want to do with those clamps, that's up to you, right? But you also, you get one of those, which is another adapter Anderson to MC4, which means we can perfectly use it for the solar input over here for this connector. And it's, you see the color matching, this one is black, so they tell you, hey, it's black, so you should use the um, 10 amp solar input, the MPPT charger, and those MC4 basically goes to a solar panel, kind of a standard for solar panels when you buy one, and you can just easily connect it here as well and plug it in. And there you are, and unplugging is the same, other way. One other thing to mention, there's also another fan on the back of the lid, um, just for channel cooling, I would assume. This one is located over here for the MPPT charge. I assume that when it's getting too hot, that it's also getting kind of a cooling mechanism. And that is all, so which means for me, I'll close it up for you. Um, I tried to give you a brief overview. Um, you might not even need all this information, but most important is connecting the wires correctly, black to negative, red to positive, and use those caps. That's really, really important because um, just to isolate it better make sure nothing's touching. Then you close it, just make sure that you have laid out the wires a little bit more healthy. Nothing's touching, nothing's wiggling around, that works well. Battery strapped in, let me use my batteries. And don't do it like I did. I had a main power switch on the whole time, turning it off. And then you use a Torx T25, just three also. In terms of housing quality, I feel like 
It's a pretty hard, solid plastic. You get also those handles on the side so you can carry it around. And it does have some weight to it, but um, this one works pretty well so far. I was pretty happy using this. So when I turn it on, turn on the inverter, what we're going to do, uh, we try to pull a little bit below a thousand and we'll try to pull also um, over a thousand what will happen. Because this one um, is rated up to a thousand watt, but um, there's of course always those peaks, which it can um, have for a few seconds, but don't overdo it, otherwise you will um, damage your device. To do that, to pull a lot of power at the same time, we'll use a little heat gun. And we'll use uh, speed one here in this case, and then we'll see how much it is changing, and you can see it. Turning on, pulling around 700 watts right now, which is good, it's below a thousand. I did already a couple other tests and it worked pretty well, um, so I'm really not worried about this inverter so far. Turn it off, goes back to zero, and then turning it on to the second level, which should, you know, we'll hear it. 800, 1000, 200, and now it's peeping. I'll stop immediately, because I don't want to overdo it, but at one point it will just have a safety shut off. So going over 1000, which is the rating for this one, you shouldn't do that. But when uh, you do it continuously with level one, at one point also you can feel in here, which, which at the moment you cannot hear, but feel in here there is the fan in the back running already because it's pulling more capacity. When you turn it off, the fan also stops. But I feel like the inverter itself, um, up to you usage, a thousand watt is really good, whatever you want to use it for. They do have other models um, I saw. They have even a version with 2000 watts, so in case you want to have for example, AC running, you could totally do that with the other unit. I'm pretty sure 2000 watt is great. In general, this is a really nice and neat box. So now, I'm, you know, I can just switch out my battery status and I see a little gouge here, which is awesome. Can turn the inverter off, can just use um, all of my quick charge stuff. Uh, I did try to quick charge my laptop. It's not super possible, I feel like. Those are having a total of 30 amp fuse. So it means each is max, really maximum of 10 amp per unit. So keep that in mind, you will not be able to charge a laptop uh, really quick, if at all. I tried a little bit, um, it's, it doesn't work as well. I'd rather use the AC power for that, to be honest. It does come with some instructions. I didn't see the instructions on how to connect the battery. Uh, so I hope um, I showcased it good enough for you. I didn't take it out and put it in. There are other videos out there where they were doing that. Um, there's, for example, one. Uh, but every th all the adapters they delivered with it worked flawlessly, no issues. I saw some reviews or some, some feedback that they, they reversed polarity um, with one or the other adapter. Not the case with my uh, unit, I just got it, just received a couple days back. So, so I got one of those chargers, I'm also linking in the description below. This is a up to 20 amp smart charger they call it for lithium ion faucet batteries. It can also do um, AGM lead acid, um, so that's not a problem. On the one side, you have your normal power cord to your home outlet. On the other side, you do have um, here a quick connect to those clamps. So you just plug it in. That, that's how the unit comes, by the way. Plug it in, and now just use your adapter they delivered with it and con connect the clamps from the charger with the Anderson connector over here and those clamps, black to black, red to red, charge it. I feel like that's the easiest to do, um, to not taking it apart at all, but that is an easy and simple way to just charge it. Maybe there's another charger, you know, you want to build your own charger, you can do it as well. The cool part about this whole thing is you can go ahead and charge it with solar at the same time. So as you remember, up there, whoop, up there somewhere, I put a solar panel on the roof of my car and that's exactly the use case, or not use case, that's the example I want to show you. I took this box with me and just let it run on solar and let it charge back up. So in this setup, um, we brought a little city battery box, including the 12 volt battery, up somewhere outside. Yes, it is warm. We brought it up, we tried to enjoy the sun and the nature, so that's why we're filming now outside. We're filming back in the car because we're on the road. We do have the Lucidity battery box with me. 
Um, and you can see this is changing from 13.4 to 13.5 volts. And here you can maybe also see this little bar going up and down. I'm using the MPPT charger, maximum of 10 amps it can. And I used the adapter they provided with it, connected it, as you've seen in one of the other videos. Um, I put a solar panel on the roof of the car and I'm using that solar panel to get power back in while I connected it with uh, this Anderson connector to the MC4 connectors, going up to solar panel. And I recharge with the internal solar charger. And that is really amazing, um, I like that. So I'm using this one, um, getting up to charge. So that's one method you could do, just the internal solar charger. Or you have another MPPT charger, um, like I brought, oh, coincidence. I did bring this little friend, which I showed you in another video, up there. Um, this little friend, and I can use another input, which is up to 50 amp rated. So I could use and max this out, or even another um, MPPT charger, which is, I don't know, up to 50 amp rated, and you have way more solar. You could use one of the other Anderson connector on the battery back here, instead of using the internal solar charger, we'll use one of the Anderson connectors. And then we also have a reading, because here, unfortunately, the only disadvantage is you only see voltage. So you can see it's changing, it's going up, but you do not know how many amps you're putting in. Alrighty, I changed the setup. We still have the inverter on just to understand what's the voltage. Let me read it to you. It's 13.4 right now. It's changing to 13.5, similar to what it was earlier. But instead of using this adapter, which is here, right? Instead of using this adapter, we're using this adapter. Oh, not ad adapter, sorry. We're using this input. We are not using the solar charger in this case, we are using an external solar charger. So this one, right? Let me turn it back on a little bit. Anyway, it says 5.9 amp we're putting in the battery. So in this case, um, we are able, we are able to use an external device to charge the battery, the Lucidity battery box, battery and my battery in there, and just topping it up or getting it back up and refill it basically. I really like the Lucidity battery box so far. It gives me a lot of flexibility, what I can do with it. I think that's all I wanted to show you outside here. Awesome. So you see, it's pretty practical to have such a battery box, like the Little City battery box. Is it a non plus ultra? I don't know, but I, I really like it. And it gives me a lot of flexibility because it also has the AC inverter. So you can use it for different things, but um, it's up to your use case, to your size and battery, whatever you need. Uh, I think it is really nice when you have, you know, this camping feeling, you want to do something outside, outdoors, to have such a battery box with ha which has all the adapters and all connectors you need. Makes it very easy um, and very user-friendly as well. If I just look for something very simple, I think that's something to go with. If you rather have the DIY, you rather have something to expand, to work on, it would be too boring for you, honestly. There are some people out there who are just like to plug it in, use it, and that's it. Thanks for watching this. Link is in the description below to this unit where you can buy it. I hope you enjoyed this video as well. As always, if you want to subscribe, I'm super happy with that. I'm not saying no. Thanks, guys. See you next time. And uh, oh, of course, leave all your comments, feedback if you want to see something specific also to this unit. Leave it down in the description below and I'll try to get back. Thanks for watching. Cheers!